I want you to turn with me to begin with tonight of uh, the second epistle of Timothy and the third verse. Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, 2 Timothy. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You know, one of the great problems of the church in 1982 is that somewhere along the road we've got the notion that it's a democratic form of government. We've come to a place that we'll vote in and vote out. We even come to where we have committees to decide whether we can go in all the world and preach the gospel or not. Somebody asked Mr. Montgomery, who is the head of the British forces and second in command to Mr. Eisenhower in World War II. Mr. Montgomery was a born-again Christian. And somebody asked him, how do you interpret the Great Commission? And the general said, you don't interpret that, you do it. Well, that's the way with most of the gospel, folks, is it doesn't need so much interpretation as it does the people that realize that we're under orders. We're not in a military or in a democratic form of government. We're in a military form of government when we become a part of the church. Now, you aren't drafted, you volunteered. But once you got in, this book says that you're not your own. You have been bought with a price. Now, in a form of democracy, you have a choice and still be right. You know, in this world we live in, the democratic form of government, you have a, you have a choice and still be right. But in a military part, you don't have any choice. I never had a sergeant in the four years I was in the Marine Corps. I never had a sergeant to ever ask me, how do you like you on a hike this morning? Amen. Nobody ever asked me, would that be acceptable with me? They just said, what time to report? Now the church, all of the scripture, when you take them together, show us that we are a part of a military organization. That is, as far as its government is concerned, and so being, we are soldiers. We are soldiers for Christ. And we need to get that into our minds. Here the scripture I read said endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Then again the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but are mighty through God. Put on the whole armor of God. It talks about the church as terrible as an army with banners. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing more exciting on this earth than to be a part of the church. Our great preacher brother, Shambach, has said night after night, we're in a warfare. We're not at a party, folks. We're in a battle. This is not a debating club. It is a life or death struggle. There's a real enemy out there on that street tonight. There is an evangelical fervor to destroy everything that's good in this nation. There is a cross in your schools, in everything. There is the purpose of hell to destroy from this earth everything that's good. And the only hope is a church that's militant tonight. One of the greatest preachers America has, I don't know whether he's still alive or not, but he's a black man from up here in New York named Bishop Washington. Now that has to be one of the greatest preachers ever picked up a Bible. My wife and I was driving through this country about 11.30 one night listening to XEG when the great preacher came on. Brother Bishop, he began to address himself to Lyndon Johnson. He is president then. And he said, Mr. Johnson or Mr. President, if you got time to listen to a man that knows, then listen to this man of God. America doesn't need bigger bombs. America doesn't need a bigger military. What America needs is the militant preachers. Thank God men that are not afraid to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Mr. President, the most successful preacher that ever lived on this earth was a man by the name of Noah. I slowed the car down to a walk. I said, I can't afford to miss this. He's saying that Noah was the most successful preacher ever lived. 
down. Only eight people wound up on my boat. But as I slowed down, Dr. Bishop, Brother Bishop Washington said, everybody know it didn't save, he damned. He never missed one human being. Let me tell you something, folks. When the church stands up as what God intends it to be, then that world is going to listen to it. Men listen to what they, what they can't control. Men listen to what they're afraid of. That's the reason that hippie crowd has disturbed the nation, throwing their garbage cans in our streets. Amen. The government didn't know what to do with them. Well, I'm telling you, there is nothing that can control God. There's nothing that can control the church. There's nothing that can stop the church that'll walk with God. Washington said, Mr. President, when none of those so rotten that a turkey buzzard had to hold its nose to fly over it, all God had to find was a preacher. Thank God when Jonah hit the main street of Nineveh with a message of repentance, 600,000 people came to Christ. Listen to me, folks. The church is a military organization under orders tonight. We're of another kingdom. This Bible makes it plain. We are in us the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, but the kingdom of God is within us. Wherever that church is, then the boundaries of God's kingdom are established. You know tonight, if Mexico or Canada were to invade this nation, they'd find themselves in trouble. There'd be a war. Amen. We love both of them. But if they become our enemies and were to cross those borders, you would find the warfare. Well, when we set this tent up in the Bronx and declare this to be the kingdom of God, then the world of darkness has set itself against us tonight. And we must rise up in the power of God's Holy Spirit. No wonder they wanted to kill Paul. No wonder they tried to kill Peter. They are saying, this is no longer the devil's territory. It's the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, folks. We're not the squatters. I said, we're not the squatters. They're counting our money. They're sitting on our property. This Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. When the church will rise up to take it. We're in a war tonight. We're soldiers. And Paul told Timothy, you've got to learn to endure hardness as a real soldier. A lot of the theology you hear preached today is a cheap grave sold on the marketplace of religion. They'll try to tell you that if you've got any problems, it just means you're out the will of God. I'm here to tell you, if you're not having problems, you're outside the will of God. you alone. That means you're no threat to him. I, I never knew anything about a warfare until I come to know God. Amen. But you step out on the front lines of evangelism and you say to the devil, you're not going to have the Bronx any longer. We're going to stand 